Okay. All right, my friends. I am so sorry. Lots of technical difficulties this morning. If you're hanging in with us, that means you, my friend, are a ninja and you're and you rule. So I, I apologize. No sound. I know. I know. I know. I suck. I know. I know. No sound. I know. I know. It's not you. It's me. But guess what? We're back up now. So I'm gonna wait till I see. Ah, look. I see a lot of thumbs up and people being happy now. And yay. Okay. This is life. It's real life. It's what happens. Uh, the rest of the time when things are going so smoothly, that's bullcrap. That isn't life, right? This is life. It happens sometimes, all right? Hey, how you doing? Uh, for those folks that rock and did not run away because of a, of a minor uh, technical difficulty, thank you for sticking around. And because of that, you're going to be rewarded, okay? Um, all right. So, in fact, i tell you what I'm going to do. What we're going to do today is we're going to... Uh, we're going to, oh, I'm going to do, I've got to do something special for you for hanging out today. So I'll figure something out. Uh, okay. But nonetheless, we are definitely giving away a lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System today. And I'll tell you what, that's what we're going to do. We're going to give away two memberships to the, to the lifetime uh, Unstoppable Guitar System slash 365. That's an $800 value. So boom, for waiting 15 minutes, an extra 400 bucks of course, of courses, right? Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. So without further ado, I played that song like nine times and you didn't hear any of it, but that's okay because you've heard it before. So we're going to jump into it. We're going to jump into the lesson right away. For those that are on Facebook, I apologize. Instagram got to see the whole shite show. So how it was fun, wasn't it? Um, but we're going to jump right into the lesson here. And today, friends, is as part one of a two-part series on blues lead guitar essentials. So if you remember last week, we had a two-part series on blues rhythm guitar essentials where we learned all about the 12-bar blues, how to play that in different keys, why, you know, the chords that we needed for that seventh chords and how to uh, create seventh chords out of the chords that we already know through a, a few simple little tweaks. We literally doubled our chord vocabulary up to quadrupled our chord vocabulary with one little trick that I showed you. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to watch that broadcast from last week. It's in my live broadcasts on YouTube and there's a PDF for that as well. A ton of information that we went over that day. So what we're doing this week is we're talking, about, oh, and we did boogie woogie licks. We did boogie woogie turnarounds as well, right? <laughs> all that bit. So that's the kind of stuff that we're going to be talking about today, except it's going to be on blues lead. Okay, good. Here we go. So if wherever you're watching right now, in the description of the video on YouTube, if Facebook's up, then it'd be there too. Uh, but there's a description for the video. You're going to click on the link, something about a PDF. You're going to click on that. That will get you exactly what you want and exactly what we're going to be covering here in today's lesson. Okay. All right. So assuming that you have done that already and you're looking at it, then uh, here we go. We're doing this right now. Okay. So I'm looking at this same PDF that you're looking at. It says Blues Lead Guitar Essentials live streams September 5th and 6th. And that's what we're looking at. Okay. I'm not going to read everything for you. That's there for you. Extra information. I'm, I'm into doing things on the spot, so we're not, we're not reading. But the things that I'm going to be teaching you today are the pentatonic scale, how one specific note called the blue note will create the blues scale. And if you understand how to use the pentatonic scale, you're going to know how to use the blues scale. Both very powerful scales, the pentatonic scale, of course, what I call the most powerful scale in the world, because if you know that one form one, you can use it in major and minor key songs, which is 99.9999999% of all songs that's ever that have ever been created. So basically all the songs. And you could do it major, minor key, doesn't matter what key you're in, okay? It could be major or minor, but I mean any of the key signatures. So we're going to talk about that. Um, we're going to talk about the blues scale, the, the one note that makes it blues and then how to treat that note because there's some special bits. It's kind of like hot sauce, what I call hot sauce. And hot sauce is awesome, isn't it? Isn't it great when you put it on whatever it is that you, that you want to have a little hot hotness in it? It's so awesome. So why not just pour the whole bottle on there, right? No, it's not the way it works. Same thing with the blue note. It's a spice and we want to use it 
sparingly and when all the right places. Mm, when you do, my friends, it's beautiful. Okay, so we'll talk about that, the blue note. We're going to talk about springboards today, which has to do with when you're looking at the guitar neck to be able to play licks all over the fretboard. <laughs> So being able to being able to play the same lick all over the neck is good. It's important because it allows you to express yourself in different ways. But more importantly than that, it allows you to play all over the neck and not be bound to one certain area, even if you only know form one of the pentatonic scale. Okay, so I'm going to show you all about that. And then next or next uh, day tomorrow. We're gonna, in the part two, we're going to talk about phrasing, call and response, minimalistic blues, and basically how to take the tools that we'll learn today and actually breathe life into them. Now, before we actually begin, understand this. There is, and I don't say this just to say it. I say it because it's the truth, and I've only done this with, I've taught thousands of lessons over decades now, okay? And I've never seen this not to be true. If you practice something, your brain is incapable of not learning, okay? It's incapable of not learning. So I'll say it another way. If you practice something, you're going to learn how to do it. It doesn't matter what it is. Ice hockey, cooking, a new language, the blues, doesn't matter because your brain cannot see something, do it, practice it, and not end up creating a habit. It's impossible. It's called neural paths uh, or, or building synapses, and it's just the way we learn. So I know there's a ton of people out there who are like, yeah, I just don't know if I'm cut out for this. If you have ears and you heard what I just said, you're cut out for this, okay? So all that to say, don't worry about your fat fingers and your small hands and everything else. Otherwise, I'll send you that link of the guy playing guitar who's got no arms and he's playing with his toes. And you'll be very humbled and you'll say, I'm sorry, Eric, I'm going to be playing the blues. Okay. So without further ado, you can do this. It's just a matter of learning the bits and pieces and then putting them together. I promise if you're one of those people that don't believe in this, then you're just disabling yourself from being all that you can be. Okay. Otherwise, just trust me if you don't trust the process. Just trust me that I know what I'm talking about. I've never not seen this work in like almost 40 years, okay? So you're gonna learn this and you're gonna rock out, socks out. Cool? All right, so um, what else? Oh, real quick, share this video. Share it because that's how we're going to award two winners today of the lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System slash 365. That's $800 of love that I'm sending you guys today, okay? Two winners will win today. It's so easy to do this, okay? If there's 100 people watching right now, you've got a 2% chance. That's pretty big, okay? And we do this every day or every time we go live, so it stacks up really quickly. Your chances of winning are, are very, very high, okay? All right, so let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the pentatonic scale and all that good stuff, okay? So the pentatonic scale, penta meaning five, like, like uh, pentagon, right? It's the five note, tonic meaning notes, the five note scale. There are many five note scales, like the whole note, like the whole tone scale and the augmented scale and that sort of thing. But this is, most people know that this, they call this the pentatonic scale and it's just kind of known as that uh, for its particular sound, okay? Pentatonic scale, as shown in the PDF that I've created for you that you can find in the description of the video, I'm going to show you form one. Now, I give you many forms, but we're not going to get into all those forms. Those forms are for you for later, and here's why. It's kind of like if you're a carpenter and I say, go buy this kind of hammer and this hammer and this hammer and this hammer because you need these five different hammers to do these five different things. But let's say you don't know how to use a hammer at all. You're just like you're taking it and you're trying to screw screws in and you're 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 holding the hard end of it and you've got the wood end over here and you're like hitting things and you don't know what to do with it. Well, that's what the pentatonic scale is like. So there's no need in buying more hammers if you don't know how to use the first one. So let's learn how to use that first hammer today in our construction of blues. Let's learn how to use pentatonic form one. It's used 99% of the time anyhow and you literally can can 
create massive solos from just that one form, okay? So let's get good at that, and then when you get so good at that, then you can move on to the other forms. I don't say that sarcastically, I say that honestly. Get really good at one form, because once you do that, you're gonna have the confidence to move into another form, and a lot of those licks and stuff will come out in different ways in your new forms, but if you can't learn it in one form, you're not gonna learn it in the other forms. More forms ain't gonna help you, okay? So. Let's look at this. We're, we're looking at the first pentatonic scale diagram, A minor pentatonic scale form one. This is the first form that you're gonna see inside of the PDF. It's yellow, and you're gonna see some red circles around a couple of notes, or two or three notes, okay? This is the key that we're in. In this case, we're playing this form as if it's in a minor key. You know minor, it sounds like this. It's very sad sounding. heard that before, that sound, that minor sound, right? Well, and major would be like this. So minor, major. So think about it sad or happy, basically, in a nutshell. That's what we're talking about. There's some other bits and pieces I could tell you, but we're gonna, we can't get off on a tangent here, okay? So we're in a minor key. Say we're in A minor, open A. This is also an A right here. And according to the scale diagrams that, you, that you're looking at right now, that first one, form one, the yellow one, looks like this. And I'm telling you the fingers now because we're at the fifth position, first finger behind the fifth fret. And basically what we're doing here is we're going to be playing fingers one and four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four. I'll do it again. So one, four. One three one three one three. One four one four. Now, why is that helpful? Okay, well, just like earlier when I was pouring my soul out into this track that you didn't hear, I'm joking, but I, I was playing um, to slow dancing in a burning room, which is very bluesy sounding. It's in C sharp. Now check this out, okay? Because I'm gonna show you just how powerful this is. This is in the key of A minor, what I just showed you, right? And I say it's the most powerful scale in the world because here you go, here's slow dancing in a burning room by John Mayer. It's in the key of C sharp minor. So literally I could take this same form in A and go A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp. So technically, if Eric's not a big fat liar, then here you go, in the key of C sharp minor, he should be able to, to noodle a little bit over this, right? So let's listen. So here it is, here's the track, C sharp minor. into a little bit of a of form two, but that's okay. It's all the same notes. Even though we've got all these different forms, it's the pentatonic scale, meaning the five note scale, meaning that's it. There's only five notes to it, and they just repeat all over the neck. You may not get this at first. It took me years to actually see this, years, years, years. I can show it to you literally in a lesson. I do this in, my, in all my courses, right? But it took me years to figure this stuff out on my own. But the pentatonic scale is the five note scale. It repeats all over the neck, okay? Now, with that being said, okay, we can take this one form here and we can play it in a major or minor key. So just now we played it in C sharp minor. We could take that same form and play it in a major key. Now I just threw a note in there that was the blue note as well. Let's talk about this really quickly because before we go into major and minor, it works the same for pentatonic or blues. We're just adding this whole nother note in there, okay? Should I, should I go down that path now? No. No, let's, let's go to major here. Let's stick with pentatonic. I'm throwing that blue note in there every now and then. And I 
apologize. It's just so within me to do that, to throw in that blue note because I love the blues that I just do it sometimes automatically even if I'm playing the pentatonic, okay? So let me explain to you major minor how we can move this this scale within any song whatsoever to immediately start playing a lead. I don't care what song it is. Country, blues, rock, jazz, does not matter. You literally, there's a tonal center, okay, if you're listening to 99.999% of the music out there, there's a tonal center, and with that tonal center, that tonal center says, hey, these are the notes that belong. These are the ones that magnetically work and rotate around the, the tonal center. Okay, that's the only laws that we're abiding by right now is what we call diatonic harmony. Okay, so we can take this scale, we can put it in a major minor key. I'm going to show you how we can do this in a major key. Okay, so just now we were playing a little bit in A minor. You know, we had. And then we did something in C sharp minor uh, with John Mayer. But now we're going to do something in a, in a major key. And so this would be, this would be, we're going to use the same exact form, but what our tonal center is, is different. Now on page, this is exactly what I'm telling you here on the, on the second page of the pentatonic forms, you're going to see C major pentatonic. Okay. There's A minor and there's C major. You're probably saying to yourself, but Eric, that's the same thing. It is the same exact thing. Let me explain a, a concept in a very simple way that you're just going to have to believe me because you're not going to understand it all in one fell swoop. It takes a little time. For every major key, there is a related minor key. For every minor key, there is a related major key. What that means is, just like you're related, if you're related to anybody by blood, chances are you are. If you have a head, you're, you're, you're related to somebody by blood, okay, if you're walking and talking. So with that being said, Every person is related to somebody. Every major key is related to a minor key. Every minor key is related to a major key. And what that means is they share, just like you share the same blood, right, or some of the same genes and stuff, the two keys share the notes. They share the same notes. They share the same chords. Okay, Eric, well, why differentiate between the two different keys? I'm so glad you asked because this. Have you ever heard two people let's say, arguing on Facebook about politics. I've never seen this. I've heard about it. But let's say someone posts something political on Facebook. And then somebody else says, well, that's not true because blankety blankety blank, right? And they're going back and forth. And they're talking about the same things. Let's say it's war. They're talking about war. They're talking about guns. They're talking about uh, death. They're talking about lives. They're talking about freedom. They're talking about money, this, that, and the other thing, right? Well, they're talking about all the same stuff. They agree, right? Obviously not, because the way that they're talking about those particular things determines what their stance is, okay? So in the same way, major and minor, depending on how you play those notes, and especially the notes that you keep repeating over and over again, kind of like political posts, the things that people say over and over and over again, determines what their stance is. In the same way, when music, if you play notes a particular way, especially specific notes, you will be saying, this is the tonal center. This is where I stand. I'm a minor key guy or I'm a major key guy. Okay, But it's also dictated by the chord progression that's happening in the background. If you have chords that are really painting a minor scene, if you will, then the minor pentatonic is what you're going to be using. If it's a major sounding chord progression, then it's the major pentatonic that you would be using. But the tonal center is the same. Let me explain. So for instance, I'm going to play a little ditty here that you might have heard before that goes like this. <laughs> that particular chord progression is in the key of D major. So we got D, C, hang in there, D, C, and G. And it just so happens to be in the key of D major. A lot of people think it's in the key of G major, but Alas, that's for a whole nother lesson. It's in the key of D major. So we've got this D major chord progression going. So one might say, okay, well, let's use the pentatonic, right, which would be. Well, that's not going to sound good because it's minor. We need to put this in a major key. So 
in order to put this in a major key, the only thing we have to do, watch this, it's so easy. Watch this. We're gonna take this particular form. And the only thing we're gonna do is we're gonna play the same exact thing, but instead of putting our first finger here at the 10th fret, which is a D, we're gonna put our pinky there. And we're gonna play the same form, but we're gonna start on the pinky. So it's the same one four one three one three one three one four one four bit that you just learned, but we're starting on our pinky. So instead of this, we're playing. Okay, that takes a little getting used to. You're gonna have to do that a few times. But what that does for us is it creates this whole other sound. Okay, so watch this. sounded nice and happy, didn't it? It did, because we're playing in major pentatonic. Now I threw a blue note or so in there. That part's gonna, gonna, gonna mean less to you here in just a moment here, because it's really the same scale. We're just kind of throwing in the spice, if you will. You can think about the pentatonic scale as nachos, right? There's like five things in there, right? Like onions and beans and corn chips and, right? Call that the pentatonic scale. Uh, but you can think about the blue scale as the hot sauce that goes on it. Maybe you'll use it, maybe you won't. It's gonna taste a lot better if you do though. So we're gonna use that pentaton, we're gonna use that, that blue note eventually here in a minute. But just understand when you're playing the pentatonic scale, which is the blues, okay, it's getting real close there, then you can do this in any major key, any minor key. I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions about this in the feed right after, and that's okay, because I'm because that's what I'm here for, is to help you get through this. But understand this. Whatever the first, whatever the chord is that is your tonal center, okay? And it's, I have other lessons to, to discuss this, but know what your tonal center is. If your chord progression starts off in a minor key, chances are it's in a minor key. Okay, if it starts off in a major, on a major chord, that up feeling, then it's probably in a major key. Uh, a lot of times the first chord of the song and the last chord of the song will dictate the key that you're in. Remember, I said sometimes, not all the time, probably about 80% of the time that's true, maybe even more than that. Uh, so you find out what the key is, you find out what your tonal center is, and then you say is it major or minor, you'll find that out by what's that first or last chord, is it major or minor, and that will help you determine the key, and then what pentatonic scale to use. I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions about that and that's okay. That's also why in this PDF that you can find in the description of the video, I've spelled it all out for you. So even if you don't get it in this lesson here or with the questions and answers, you're going to get it after reading the PDF because I spell it out to you so very simply, okay? And I've got color coordinated bits here. You're gonna get this, okay? I promise. Now, let's talk about uh, the blue note, okay? Now this, there's a, f a few pages about the blue note here, and then I have the blue note forms. Now you're going to see that that looks exactly the same, except there's a couple notes added. And technically there's only one note added, it's just that we've got multiple octaves of this. If you don't understand that yet, it's okay, you will. But trust me, because I've done this a while, it is, we're only adding one note. We're adding the blue note, okay? It's what's called the, the blue note, and it's the note that it's called a flat five. It's also known as a sharp four. It's also known as a tritone. So there's a lot of different names for it, but most folks call it a flat five. And because if we play the major scale, one, two, three, four, five, it's the fifth note that we flatten. And it goes, and so we add that note to the minor scale. So here's our normal pentatonic, one, two, three, four, five, and then we're back to the one again. One, two, three, four, five, and then back to the one again. But if we add that note here, one, two, three, four, five, six, now we have six notes, okay? The hexatonic scale. As someone joked about online, they were totally right. It's the hexatonic scale. Okay, and 
I should say, sorry, the, the, whole, the whole tone scale and the augmented scale that I said earlier were pentatonic, they're hexatonic as well. My apologies. So, if we add this blue note, as you're going to see it in the diagram there, what it does is this is the hot sauce, if you will, okay? Let me play a little something for you, not using the pentatonic, or using the pentatonic, and then I'll do it using the blues, okay? So to start off here, I'm going to be just using the pentatonic, okay? <laughs> So that's just pentatonic. Now, if I play blues, I'm gonna add that one note. It's gonna sound a little bit more sad and it's gonna cry more, okay? We're, anytime we're playing an instrument, we're, we're evoking our spirit, right? We're evoking our emotions, at least. If you don't believe in your spirit, there's some emotions, dear God, you got those, right? Uh, you cry, you ever cry? It's that, it's that part of you you're, you're, you're getting out it's coming out to your fingertips and to your guitar. The more you practice, the more it, you can actually express yourself. So in this case here, we're adding that blue note and that blue note is just the ingredient that we need to really get this blue sound. So check this out. So here we go. Okay. So. So it adds a new little spice, if you will, okay? And here's my rule as far as the, the blue note. You don't really want to rest on it too long, okay? There's, I have a few rules for it very quickly. All this stuff I go over in massive detail inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, the one that we're giving two of these away today, by the way. So I go into lots of detail. It seems like I'm flying through this stuff. It is because I'm trying to give you as much as possible in the shortest amount of time because I really respect your time. And I don't know where everybody's at. There's some beginners, there's some advanced folks in here. So I've got to give you as much as I can. You can always rewind it, look at the PDF, you're gonna get it. But if you really need more detail, take advantage of our dollar offer that we've got where you can get in the whole flipping system, okay? Do that, it's yourguitarsage.com slash one. Yourguitarsage.com slash one, okay? The link of that will probably in the, be in the description of the video, otherwise I just gave it to you. Okay, so. Let's get into this. So the, my rules for the blue note are don't hang on the note too much, okay? It's like hot sauce. The more you're pouring on your chili, it, you can overdo it, okay? So you don't wanna just hang on it too much. You also wanna use the notes that are around it a little bit. So for instance, if this is the blue note, which it is, watch this if I don't use any notes that are around that note. Let's see how this sounds, watch this. So first I'll play, I'll, I'll, I'll skip the note. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw the blue note in there without playing any other notes that are close to it. Watch this. Doesn't sound very good, does it? No, it doesn't. So, what happens if I add a note that's close to it? Let's try that. Now, all of a sudden, it works, doesn't it? You gotta use one, at least, note that's close to the blue note. If you use both of them, so you use it as a passing note. Oh, sorry, I'm in another key now. So we're passing through, right? Here's our note, here's our other note. And we're, we're getting from one note to the other, 
via the blue note. And that sounds really nice. So that's one of my other rules, is that if you use at least, use at least one of the other notes that are around it, okay? Bending into the note and out of the note, that's a, a nice thing to do too. Folks do that all the time in blues, okay? Okay, so that's the blues scale. I've got a whole chapter about the blues scale, major or minor. We did both here, so make sure you go over that, okay? Really important. Let's talk about springboards really quickly because springboards, and you're not gonna find this on the internet if you do, if you search it, it's my videos that are gonna pop up because this is just a concept that I've come up with that, that basically is a way for you to think about the fretboard where you can look down at it and you can see where you're at all the time very quickly. For instance, if I'm playing the blues, let's, let's stick with this key, right? I can use springboards like to determine immediately what key I'm in. And I can, what I mean by that is I know where the octaves are. So if we're in the key of C sharp, it's really, 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 really important that I know where the C sharps are because that is our tonal center, okay? If you go up and you got a speech and you got all these great facts to support your thesis, but you keep forgetting what your thesis is, well, that's not gonna be a very effective speech. It's gonna sound like you talk very eloquently, but then when you go to close it, you know, you start off the speech, but you forgot, forgot why you're there at your TED Talk, it's not gonna be very impressive. You gotta start off out of the gate telling people what you're gonna bring. That's why I always tell you right away is what we're talking about today, and then I do a review in the end, because it's good, it's a good refresher. We're used to this, and it's helpful. So, in a similar, similarly, when we're soloing, having that note, immediately accessible to us is very important in order to say what it is we're trying to say. If it's not there and we're finishing up a phrase and we end it on some other note other than the tonic, it might sound okay, but eventually we need to end on the tonic, okay? That sort of thing. It has that sound to it. Okay, so, and the springboards you're gonna find inside the PDF that you can find in the description of the video. But the one that, I'm just gonna show you one, I have several in here, and then we're gonna get straight to questions, okay? So, the most important one to me is this, on the sixth or the fifth string, okay? My Apple Watch keeps getting stuck on my guitar. Um, there's the fifth and sixth string springboards, and it goes like this. If we're on the sixth string and we want to find an octave, one octave up, we're going to go down two strings, up two frets, okay? Let me zoom in on this and show you. Watch this. So here we are. This is a C sharp. And if I wanted to find a C sharp that's up an octave, this is the tenth, uh, this is the ninth fret, by the way, of the low E string. If I want to go up an octave, I'm going to go down two strings, one, two, and up two frets, one, two, and that's an octave. Let me do that again. Watch. This is a C sharp. I'm going to go down two strings. One, two, up two frets. One, two. So down and up. It's like a little box, if you will. Okay. We can do this for the fifth string as well. So here we are at the fifth string. This is an F sharp. Okay. And if we want to find another F sharp, we're going to go down two strings. One, two, up two frets. One, two. And there is another F sharp. So with the sixth and fifth string, you go down two, up two. With the fourth and third string, you're going to go down two strings, up three frets. Three. Okay, watch. So here we are. Here's a B. I'm going to go down two strings, one, two, and up three frets, one, two, three. Instead of up two, it's going to sound like that. They're going to boo you off stage. You're going to cry. It's going to be sad. Don't do it. Make sure that you go like that. Down two strings, up three frets, okay? Same thing with the third string. Here we are. Okay, this is an E. We're going to go down two strings, one, two, and up three frets, one, two, three. Why is that important? Well, that's important because if I'm sitting here and I'm playing licks like this, so 
I can take the same licks and play them in different places on the neck. And so we may not mimic them exactly, but the phrasing could be similar to something that we did earlier. Now we're playing in different places on the neck and we're able to express ourselves more, okay? This is kind of like when I mentioned, uh, you might have different hammers for different things as a carpenter. You might have a ping hammer for smaller nails, you might have a sledgehammer to take down walls, and then you might have a standard uh, carpenter's hammer for driving nails into a board. So right there, there's three different hammers that you might need, and here's several different positions that you could derive simply from using springboards. Okay, so without you having to go and learn all five forms of the pentatonic scale or the blue scale, you've got these springboards that, that can help you move around. Okay, I have a whole series of that inside Unstoppable Guitar System. Okay, so here's the deal. That's where we're going to stop today. Um, I was going to go further, but uh, because of our technical difficulties and everything, I think we're, we're right where we should be at. And so what I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm going to teach you all about phrasing, what I call minimalistic blues, call and response, and that sort of thing, okay? So this is gonna be taking the stuff that we learned today and actually applying it. So, what did we do today? It's like when you bring your kid to Home Depot and you learn how to build a, uh, a birdhouse. This is kinda of like the first day today we learned about nails and we learned about the hammer. Now, tomorrow we're gonna to actually take that, that nail and drive it into the wood with a hammer. I know it sounds very simple and if we approach it this way, you're going to get it, okay? If you try to just play like Clapton right out of the gate, that's just not going to happen, okay? I would like to speak very positively and say it will, but I've never seen it happen. Everybody has to go through the same path, okay? Nobody gets a free ride of just, hey, I, I play blues guitar and I'm really good at it. I never practice, never seen it. So you may be the first one, but I doubt it. I wouldn't, con I wouldn't hold out that. Just practice, okay? Do what I tell you and you're going to get there, okay? So tomorrow we're going to talk about phrasing. Uh, what else are we going to talk about? Phrasing, minimalistic blues, call and response, okay? Right now what I want to do is I want to get to your questions. And Chris, we're not on Facebook, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, we were on Facebook, but we had our, our technical difficulties this morning. So all that to say, uh, we're just on YouTube. Okay, so, and we've got some Instagram folks as well. So Instagram, if you want your questions answered right now, head over to YouTube, please. Okay, because that's what we're going to be doing. Okay, in the meanwhile, I'm going to be taking a sip here and I'm looking in the feed for those, uh, those questions. Friends, please leave a question mark because there's a lot of stuff going on uh, inside of the chat and sometimes I can't, I just can't see it all. Okay, so please do that. Okay, here we go. And also, if you haven't already, share this. Why? Because if you're really selfish and you don't like sharing, or I should say if you're a kind person and you like to share, then you've done a, a great thing. Thank you so much and good karma to you. And if you're not, if you're just selfish, then you still could win something. So that's everybody. Everybody should be sharing this. And we have a few hundred people in here. So, um, we should have a few hundred shares. In doing so, after the broadcast, we look for someone who shared this, and voila, somebody wins a lifetime membership of guitar lessons. It's pretty cool, right? All right, two people today, since you guys are still here, even though we went through those technical difficulties. Thank you so much. Okay, I did see a question, and it was from John. Sherrick, what's up, brother? Uh, Eric, how often should I come back to the keynote when soloing on the pentatonic scale to keep it sounding good? Every three, four, five notes, just at the beginning and end. John, I'm so glad you asked this question because it allows me to give you an opportunity to understand that you are an artist within you, okay? What this means is how often, three, four, or five notes. It really depends on what you're trying to do, okay? In the beginning of a solo, you might you might want to come back to it more. To say the third, fourth, or fifth note would be misleading you, and it's going to make it sound very mechanical. So really, John, what you want to be doing is you want to be listening to how does this sound? Because bottom line, that's what it comes down to. There's no rules that say three or four or five notes. It comes down to what sounds good to you. So in the beginning, what a lot of folks will do is they might play that note a lot because what they're doing is they're establishing 
a rapport with the crowd, if you will. They're establishing a rapport with the band. They're saying, hey, this is the key that we're in. Everybody comfortable? Good. We're just settling in. And it's always like three-fourths of the way through a song or near the end of the song when people just start going off, right? Why? Well, because you've been hearing the same safe licks for the last one or two, three minutes. Now we're going to get out there and we're going to stretch a little bit. Guitar players get bored. They're playing the same thing over and over again. Now they're stretching and they're, they're, they're going out to different places on the neck and maybe not playing that tonic as much as well. So, John, use your ear and truly there is, I wouldn't, wouldn't even think, is it every third or fourth or fifth note? It's probably going to be some of those. I mean, it is definitely going to be some of those, and that's probably a good-ish number. But if you're thinking that way, you're using your CPU for things that you shouldn't. Really, you should be letting go, playing that scale, and just listening. Does that note sound good over this chord, or does it need to be resolved? What resolved means is just like an argument. You know, does it need to be resolved? Does it need to be settled? Um, if you're if you're in a fight with someone and you go to bed, you don't feel good, right? Just same thing with music. There's tension and release. So if there's tension and there's no release, if it doesn't end the, the tension, then it just doesn't really sound good. But you can't have a release without tension. So music is made up of this constant tension and release, just like life can be, right? So, uh, so use your ear to tell you that, okay? That's a great question. But the reason that I say, you know, you're that artist is because it's really important that you understand um, that, that it's truly what sounds good to you, you know. So using the springboard note, do you pick up the pentatonic scale at the end of the octave note? Yes, you do. Exactly, Tom. Watch this. So I have a video out set that says, no one scale, know them all. And basically what it means is if you, if you understand, say, like the major scale, then you can play the major scale all over the neck. You'll also know the minor scale. You'll also know all the jazz modes. Now you have to understand which scale degree you're starting on that makes it a jazz mode or the minor scale, but the notes are all the same and they're all there. Okay, so for instance, if I play the pentatonic scale, here's my octave, my springboard. Watch this. the same exact sound, but an octave higher. Uh, different key. Okay, so we got a few different ways there, just knowing where our, our springboards are at. So that was four different places we played the same exact notes. That's why that's so important, you know. Uh, can you teach some bossa nova rhythms? Crack to hack. Probably not in this one, my friend. Plus, bossa nova is just not my thing. I'm, I love it. I think it sounds great. But there's probably somebody better who can teach you that stuff. That's not my forte. I would like to help you with that. But alas... I can only concentrate on so many different areas. Someone asked how often to land on the tonic. As often as your ear tells you. It doesn't matter what anybody tells you how often you should land on the tonic. If they do tell you that, run away from them because that's uh, the blues is felt. So you go, gosh, that needs to be resolved. And you resolve it. And you do this by playing the scale. You play it by playing the licks over and over again over chord progressions. And eventually you'll start feeling it you know to even even if someone had the patterns and they wrote them down on paper i mean yes to some degree we can study that we can say okay well we're on this a seven chord so you could you could you could outline the chord and i talk about that but other than that and you don't need a music degree to do that you just need to see the chord there and play the notes that are in the chord along with the rest of the scale. Uh, but if somebody tells you how, how often you should play the tonic, run, because that's not, there is no answer to that. It's like, what kind of picture are you trying to paint, you know? Uh, this will be reposted later, Celeste, indeed. I recommend a good song to practice. Carlos, I have like a thousand something videos on YouTube. There's so many of them. I don't know what you like, so really, truly, you need to look for the artist that you're looking for. Type in your guitar sage Elvis or your guitar sage Clash or your guitar sage Ramones. Those, that's all over the fret, all over. Or your guitar sage Taylor Swift. So 
Uh, I could suggest a Taylor Swift song to you, but if you don't like Taylor Swift, then that's not going to help you. So that's how I would suggest searching on YouTube is your guitar stage and then whatever artist you're looking for, you know. Uh, Eric, please demo the blues progression that starts off at the fifth string and second fret. Climber. The blues progression that starts off at the fifth string, second fret. When you say the blues progression, do you mean the blues scale? I'm going to need you to be clearer on that because a blues progression means a blues chord progression, you know? <laughs> That sort of thing, okay? And what key are you talking about? Because there's lots of things that we can do starting on the fifth string, second fret, lots. So there's some information there that, um, that I'm gonna need from you before I can answer that correctly. Tips on bending on an acoustic. Is it harder than an electric? Mark, it is much harder than any electric. I never bend strings on any acoustic because I've got thicker strings on it. Thicker strings sound better, they're louder. Uh, I say better, it's subjective, but better on the acoustic to me, they sound better. To me, they, sound, they stay in tune and intonation better. So I just don't bend that much on an, elect, on an acoustic. I may bend a half step, but not, not typically more than that. Because it just, it's not very fun on the fingers. It makes it to where other stuff hurts later on. So I would suggest not doing it. Otherwise, the tips, Mark, would be to do it more. There is no other tips other than just to practice. It's uh, that'd be like, um, and I understand the question. I appreciate the question, but it's like saying, hey, I lift 100 pounds. How can I lift 150? Well, you know the answer to that. You get in the gym more and you lift 100 pounds a lot more and you try doing 110, 120. So it really is all about practice. I wish, when everybody asks that question, I wish there was another answer I could give you, but alas, it's not. It's about practice. What is a bluesy lick that is easy and sounds good that is also movable around the fretboard? James, all of them. They're all, I mean, if you're using the blues scale, you can do that in any key. You can use that in any key, doesn't matter. All blues licks you can move all licks you can move up and down the fretboard all chords you can move up and down the fretboard and every time you do you're in a different key okay when soloing over a chord progression do you change the scale form to go with the chord or change the chord with the root note in the pattern you are playing that's a great question jr you can do that that's kind of like a a more jazzy headspace of playing where you consider the chord and then you play the notes out of that chord more and sometimes you play you you play a different scale so that's more of a, a jazz mentality and it does create it brings some new notes to the table so it will sound less traditional than standard blues but not that less traditional so you can do this every time the chord changes so if you're playing a7 d7 e7 when the a7 is playing you could play a blues okay um, when D7 is playing, you can play D blues. When, when uh, the E chord is playing, you can play E blues. And now the here, here's a, a little bit of a contradictory piece here that you might run into. Usually 12 bar blues is in a major key. Okay, so we're talking all major chords. So one would think automatically why well, should be playing major blues. But 95% of the time, the blues that you're hearing is minor blues. And it shouldn't work, but it just does work, okay? And what, what I'm saying here is that when you play an A major chord, an A7, you can use that A minor blues over it. That's minor blues, but I'm playing it over a major chord. It just works in blues. That's partially what gives blues its sound. But you can, you can as the chord changes, you can, you can jump on that chord and play. It's totally fine. Uh, I've been playing so much, my, my pads are bleeding soon, but I don't want to stop playing for days. I've, I've tried super glue. What can I do? Jeff, I would do a little bit more mental thinking about the guitar, writing some stuff down, and give your fingers a break because you don't want to get to a place where you know, it's like you want to have it to be, you want it to be fun, right? So like give it a little, give it a little space, I would, uh, and just maybe do more studying uh, of technically what's going on on the guitar 
uh, shapes and, and those sorts of things, you know? Okay, good. Uh, could you go over the starting point for the A minor and A major pentatonic scale? Rusty, they are in the, the PDF that I'm giving you. Okay, so right now in the description of the video, make sure you click on that link and download that because it's there for you and it's going to be much easier to see the actual form right there. Uh, can I please give some examples on your acoustic? Nancy is saying. Uh, Nancy is not going to be any different whatsoever. It's just going to sound like an acoustic guitar. But literally, it's the same exact thing. The forms are the same. Nothing's different. It's just going to sound slightly different. Uh, can you give me some tips for improvising solos? Crack to hack. We are going to be doing that. That's what we're doing right now. The tips are know your blues scale, know it in a major and minor key, know how to move it in all the different keys, understand your springboards, okay? Know the pentatonic scale, study it as I've shown you in the PDF, and then work on phrasing, call and response, and, and minimalistic blues, which we're going to be covering tomorrow in detail, okay? All right, good, good questions. Uh, I've had a, I've had bad pain on back of fretting hand and wrist. Any info and suggestions? I practice about one and a half hours a day. Rich, it's probably rich that you've just upped your level of practice. Would be my guess. There can be chronic pain, which is you know you want to probably see a doctor or an orthopedic or somebody about that. Uh, but a, a lot of times it could be muscle pain, it could be nerve pain, depending on what it is that you're doing. Muscle pain's fine because that's just like going to the gym. If you lift weights that you're not used to lifting, your muscles are going to be strained. You're going to be tearing muscle fibers, which is how you gain muscle. So there's nothing wrong with that. That's how you get strong. Um, but it, it's important to know the difference between the two. And I have some videos on this. On YouTube, search Your Guitar Sage carpal, C-A-R-P-A-L for carpal tunnel, and I have a two-part series with one of my students who did not listen to me, God God bless him, Jay, he's one of my favorite uh, favorite students, and he's gone on to do beautiful musical things, and he's an amazing singer and artist and everything else, but he didn't listen to me, and he ended up getting carpal tunnel because he would just grab the guitar and play a certain way, and he got carpal tunnel really bad really badly. He came back and did a video series with me, two parts, uh, where he talks about how he got it and all that rest, you know, all the rest, like things to not do and then things to do to keep that from happening. Like, for instance, stretching your hands like this for, you know, a minute or two before you start stretching, okay? Eric, which scales are most useful? Slash and the night. For, for blues, it's going to be the blues scale slash pentatonic. And for just understanding the fretboard, music theory, that sort of thing, the major scale. Okay, John just answered that one for me. Thank you, sir. I practice using a small amp, some effects through my laptop and headphones out so I can hear whatever you're playing or backing tracks with headphone. Any better ideas? I practice using a small amp, some effects through my laptop with headphones out so I can hear whatever you're playing or backing tracks with headphones. Any better ideas, Jeff? Uh, Jeff, it just depends on what you're doing. Yeah, you can use software inside the program, inside your laptop. Usually, you'll need some sort of interface device to get the guitar into the um, into your computer. Uh, for for more information on that, you could search uh, guitar interface on Google. I probably have some in my store, which you could find at kit.com/slash/yourguitarsage. I think that we do have, in fact, I think we do have, there's the link right there. Um, we have so, at least one interface in there. Uh, I have several interfaces that I use for different uh, different bits that I'm doing, okay? Okay, I play mostly lead and I don't want, I don't play cover tunes. Is this wrong? Nope, it's just the way you do things. So everybody's different. It depends on what you want to get out of you're playing though. So you're saying, I mostly play lead and I don't play cover tunes. Is this wrong? Are you in a cover band? Because if it is, then it's wrong. Or if you're expected to play covers or if you want to play covers, you know, you're not going to get good at covers if you're not playing covers. It's literally that logical. But no, there's nothing wrong with not playing covers. I think it's important to play them for me personally, because you're deriving so much energy and so much from these artists. So like, if I'm learning from Jimmy Page, I'm learning from the best, right? And who did Johnny learn, or who did Jimmy uh, learn from? He learned from Robert uh, Johnson. He learned from, uh, 
you know other great amazing players so you're learning from those guys too when you're when you're when you're learning from an artist when you're playing covers uh, you're literally copying their voice, which is going to help you d develop your voice more. Okay. What gauge is best for blues? There is no specific gauge that's best for blues, Joseph. You'll find great players like Stevie Ray Vaughan, who played 12s, and great blues players like uh, Billy Gibbons, who plays 6s. Okay. Literally half the thickness as this as this 12 so there is no there is no specific it's what what works for you anybody telling you there's some things that you can get specific about on guitar but there's some things that you can't uh if you're just being honest and when people give these real specific things you got to do this you got to play if you want to sound like stevie you got to do this if you want to play like stevie play the songs that he plays to the speed that he plays etc cetera, etc cetera. and you're gonna sound more like Stevie than if you had his amp and his guitar and playing the solo with his gauge strings but you're still not playing his licks okay you can sound just like Stevie if you play the licks as fast and as accurately as he did you know you'll be you'll be good seriously oh uh, hey Eric uh, again about my question request I think I should say the 12 bar blues scale in the key of E I hope I didn't kill the question again please demo, demo it again 12 bar blues in the key of E Okay, but you're saying at the fifth, second, possession, second position, fifth string, I thought you said. The 12 bar blues in E would be E7, A7, and B7. And we could play this, if we played this like with a boogie woogie feel, it'd be like. So we got E7, A7, and B7. And I covered that in last week's PDF. You'll have a chart for that specifically. So watch the, the blues rhythm guitar essentials that we did last week. And there's a, a PDF for you to download that shows you like these boogie woogie licks like and this, which is called a turnaround, okay? Uh, that's a great question. Do you advise me to stay in a style of music to progress? No, not necessarily, but common sense will tell you that if you're practicing blues, you're not practicing classical. So you can practice blues all day long. You're going to get a little bit better at classical just because you're fretting and you're doing the same techniques, some of the same basic techniques, but your classical repertoire is not going to get good if you're practicing blues. And if you're practicing classical, your blues repertoire is not going to get good. So it's just a time thing. If you're spread too thin, like I teach a lot and I've got a three-year-old and I've got a, my wife and I've got a 21-year-old and I've got other things in life uh, like eating and sleeping and those sorts of things. Well, the more I'm doing those things, the more I'm not playing guitar, but I kind of need to do those other things too, right? So it's just a matter of time, where, where are you spending your time, okay? Uh, is it okay to play like Santana does with a lot of leads through the whole song, or are you being rude to the singer? Jeff, I think that uh, people can overplay, yeah. And so Santana's singing and playing at the same time, typically, unless he's playing for somebody else, and then, yeah, he's playing all over the singer, which people expect Santana to play a lot, so most people probably don't aren't offended with that. But when I see a player do that and they're not sitting back in the pocket and playing, just to me, just, just personal preference, uh, it shows that someone needs to let everybody else talk you know what I mean uh, it sounds like someone who's inserting themselves too much and there are lots of players out there some great players out there that do that unfortunately uh, they, they play great and they don't want to play all the time but but and this is something that Nashville has really helped me to understand that really when it comes to a song you want the song to speak and you want the the vocalist to to have the spotlight and so if you're playing all over the singer, yeah, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like they're competing. So I am one to say, don't if the singer's singing, don't be playing on top of them. Let them stop. And then there's plenty of room to play in between. And it's a great 
method, that's a great discipline for understanding how to stay out of the way. Okay, that's great. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, Micah is saying, should I practice the pentatonic from tonic to tonic or focus on the form from start to finish? How to connect the different forms? How can we flow across the fretboard and not stay in one form? It's a great question, so let's break it up. Should I practice the pentatonic from tonic to tonic? Michael, only do this in the beginning when you're, when you're, practice, when you're learning the scale. But I've got a video that's pretty controversial. There's folks, I mean, it's controversial as you can be with the guitar, but there's a lot of folks uh, arguing on there uh, regarding this, but the majority of the people understand what I'm trying to say. I say this is the wrong way to play your scales. If you're playing your scales like this all day long, <laughs> playing like that, other than just in the beginning when you're learning your scales, it's not to say that that's wrong to do that. That's okay. You can do that. But if you want these scales to speak, you know, if you want to get... That doesn't sound much like a scale, right? It sounds like guitar licks. And so what I suggest you doing is taking a scale and finding little bits and pieces that you can, can, can exploit and that you can pull out licks because no one cares if you got a chord progression going and you're playing this. You know what that sounds like? A guy practicing his scales. We don't want that. We want licks and we want phrases and we want something to be said. So. In the beginning, practice some tonic to tonic, that's fine. But then get into improvisation because you're just bur you're just burning through time if you're not getting through to into op improvisation and learning how to make that scale sing, okay? Uh, or focus from start to finish, how to connect the different forms. And okay, so how to connect the different forms. What I suggest is, and I have a video coming out pretty soon here, which is like the to me, my like my top three places on the neck to play blues because there's lots of places you can play blues but there seems to be these spots that come out not just for me but for other players as well that just seem to exude the blues and there's so many this chalk they're chock full of so many great licks whereas there's other parts in the neck that it just seems impossible to get something intelligent and and meaningful out of it in my opinion so um so, you know, when we're trying to connect different forms, what I suggest doing is taking the form that's next to whatever form you're working on and only on two or three strings. Don't use the whole form, otherwise it's gonna just sound like, okay, I'm, sh I'm in this form. Now I'm in this form. You know, now I'm in this form. And we don't want that. We want it to sound more like. We want it to sound like that, where we're where we are moving from form to form, without it sounding like okay. Now we're shifting gears. So I suggest taking two or three strings and just working that one little area where you can shift back and forth. And then what happens is your mind will, your mind's eye will see that other form start appearing on the fretboard where you're like, oh, there it is. So that's how I suggest doing that, and that's how to flow across the fretboard. It takes time though, obviously. If I don't plan to play an acoustic guitar for a week, is it okay to leave it tuned like that? Yes, because I've heard if you don't play for some time, you should loosen the strings. Rahan, if you're not playing for for you know six months or a year or something like that, I just literally talked with my uh, my tech, my guitar tech about this. If you're not playing the guitar a lot, then yeah, you could tune it down a little bit, but literally like maybe a whole step or something uh, would take probably about 50 pounds of pressure off the neck. Uh, there's a lot, most most electric guitars, you have somewhere around 110 pounds of pressure of pull from the strings. So on acoustic guitars, there's a lot more, sometimes up to 200 pounds. So you could imagine, or I think maybe it's 150 pounds, you could imagine there's a lot of pull and that bridge wants to rip straight off of the guitar. So, but that also has to do with moisture, it has to do with is the guitar well built and those sorts of things. Will I ever do country guitar essentials? Thomas. Uh, Thomas, I, I probably should at some point. Now, I do teach some country guitar inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System, but 
Uh, yeah, I could do something like that. I, I teach that sort of thing inside UGS, but really it would be a lot of open chords, understanding the national number system and what have you, but I should do that. Thank you, Thomas, for that suggestion. All right, great. There's some great questions coming here. Okay, hang in there, hang in there. Sometimes this, uh, sometimes this chat jumps, it jumps on me, and I hate that. Someone asked something in a different language. I would like to answer that, but alas, will you? Uh, I don't know. I only know English. I'm kind of dumb like that. Will you please demonstrate proper fretting hand position for executing bends? Jerry is saying. Okay, so when it comes to bends, it's about a couple things. One, strength, but then more importantly is technique because you can have the strength and if your technique's poor, it's not gonna help you that much, okay? So technique is, is, technique is more important. Your strength will develop over time. But when I'm bending notes, I'm supporting those bends with other fingers. So if I'm using my pinky, here we go. If I'm using my pinky here, I'm going to use my third finger to help. I'm not doing this. I mean, you can hear it. Number one, it feels like it's gonna slip out from underneath my finger and it's difficult to press. So I would never do that. I would always bring in these other fingers to same thing here, here's my third finger, but I'm using my second finger as well to push that string up. Also on the top three strings you want to bend them up, and on the bottom three strings you want to bend them down. So up, and down for these strings. You can think about is all the notes should bend to the center of the guitar, because you don't want to bend off the fretboard like that. That'd be weird. So bend towards the center of the guitar. Okay, use um, use those other supporting fingers. Make sure you you're you're not too far close to the nail. If you're too far close to the nail, then you're not going to get the the meaty part of your finger that you need. That's going to give you the the proper angle. Okay, but. Uh, <laughs> My, my finger's at about a 45 degree angle as opposed to say like 90 or zero, right? It's at about a 45 degree angle, which allows me to press down on the string enough, but also press it up to the direction that I want the bend to go. Okay, uh, that's a great question. And I also have some videos on that on YouTube, lots of them obviously inside you. Yes, okay, Russell just had a light bulb moment, I love it. Uh, Jeff has an interf interface, but I'm not that savvy. Jeff, get savvy. Get savvy, my friend. You know, there's lots of videos on YouTube about how to work your, the, your interface. Sir, whatever I do, I cannot get pinch harmonics to work. I watched all videos, can you suggest something? Make sure that you're using uh, humbucker pickups, those are going to give you the, the harmonics that you're looking for. Make sure you're using lots of overdrive. The lower on the string, the easier you're gonna produce those notes and the lower pitched string. So if you're down here on five and six, you're gonna get those to sound better. But again, if you don't have a lot of overdrive, so if I throw in some overdrive here, Make sense? So, with all that being said, um, do those things. And I cover that in detail in a video that you're going to find on YouTube that says um, it's something like pinch harmonics, okay? Okay, make sense? Good, good. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, is River Flows in You a beginner guitar song? I've never heard that one, I'm sorry. When is the right time to get into the studio? Should I get an album together or try cutting a single? Jeff, Jeff, record. 
You should be recording if you want people to hear your music. So just do it. Uh, don't worry about cutting a single. I mean, just record. And here's why. The, the recorder doesn't lie. So if you're out of time, it'll tell you. If you're out of tune, it will tell you. It doesn't lie. And it's very humbling to play, to record yourself for the first time or for the first few times because you'll realize, oh, this is really where I'm at instead of where I thought I was. And, uh, and it will tell you exactly what you need to work on. So it's a good thing. It's shining a light exactly where it needs to shine, which is on your technique and, and these sorts of things. So uh, definitely don't worry about doing an album if you've never been in the studio. So if anything, you, you should cut a single, but don't worry about cutting a single uh, unless you're an, you know, an artist that people are waiting for that single or whatever. Just record, 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 and work out all the bugs. The more you record, the better you're gonna sound but the only way to do it is to make the mistakes because the mistakes are there, but you got to get them out, okay? I read a, a great book, I think it was called The Artist's Way, and it said something about writing for the trash can. It was talking about writing songs, and it was basically like if your intention is to write a hit every time you write, then you're going to be sorely disappointed because that's not in us to write hits all the time. It's in us to write, but you got to get a lot of crap out before you can get a lot of good stuff out. And anybody who's ever succeeded in anything in life will tell you that that is gospel, what I just told you. There is nobody that just has great stuff that flows out of them. It, not Elvis, not Stevie Ray Vaughan, none of those guys. They all played like crap in the beginning and eventually they became great. Elvis didn't become the way he became by coming out of the womb singing like that. He practiced a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, okay? Anything, anybody that's any doing anything uh, of quality, it's because they did it a bunch, a whole bunch. All right, great question. Um, can you play a, a long blue, can you play a long blues like that at the end? I was loving jamming along with you, buddy. Yeah, maybe so, Jeff, we'll, we'll probably do that at the end again. Any suggestions or exercise for muted sweeping, for muted sweep, for attacking a single note bend? Jackson. This is something that uh, I get these questions a lot where it's asking for a specific technique and it's, it's near impossible to say how to do this. It's almost like if I, if, uh, like if you're teaching a different language and, you, and it's something where grrr, you're rolling an R or something like that and someone says, well, how do you do that? Well, Okay, I'm doing my tongue and I'm kind of blowing air through it and uh, underneath it and it's creating that sound. But ultimately, uh, through, through mimicking and experimentation, you, you, you get that sound and then you're like, oh, there it is, and now you can do it again. So same thing when we're talking about muting notes, you know, if we're trying to play a single note, you know. Um, if I'm raking or sweeping through lots of notes here and I want to end up on one note, like that, I can tell you what I'm doing, but it's probably not going to help you that much. It's something that you have to practice a lot. But let me try to break it down here. So if I'm doing this, uh, the first note I'm actually playing, and then I'm take I'm pulling my finger off of it right away. Okay. The other notes in between there, I'm not actually playing. So for instance. I'm playing that first note, but the second note I'm not playing. It's a muted note, and, this, and the third note is muted, and the last note I'm playing. I could also not play any of them, just go. So one trick that you could do is literally just mute all the notes except for the one that you want to play. I'm not playing any notes except for the top note. So when it comes time for that note to play, then obviously I've got to lift my hand up off the fretboard. So that's one way that you could do it. Uh, the other way to do it is to 
make sure that you've got all the notes that are underneath your finger as uh, diatonic notes that should work. For instance, like a chord, you know, if I'm playing an actual chord, and then my right hand as I'm sweeping is muting notes as I'm, it's muting notes after they're being played. So that just takes, that just takes time. I do have some videos on sweeping as well, uh, Jackson, that will more show you the patterns more than anything else, okay? All right, good. Good questions. Okay, a uh, single note bend, a muted sweep for a single note bend. Same thing too, Jackson, you're just adding a bend in there, if that makes sense, you know. You had that Floyd Wright. I'm not sure what that question is or if that was for me at all. Uh, do learning scale important? Yes, I'm gonna say yes, it is. Uh, pentatonic is good and major scale, very important. What is the difference between a pinch harmonic and a false harmonic? They're the same, really. A harmonic is just when we get this kind of sound. That sort of sound from our guitar. Um, we can do that. We can do that through just lightly touching the string this way with our fretting hand, or we could do it by slightly touching the string with our picking hand. So. Okay, and I'm doing that. Uh, I've got a video for that. We won't go into that lesson right now, but that's I'm picking. I'm allowing the the string to come off of the pick and barely graze my thumb. Okay, this is where you'd want to do it on the lower strings, lower frets, lots of overdrive, preferably humbucker pickups. You can do it with single coil, obviously, but um, all those different things add up to you you hearing it. Uh, easier, you know. Why do I gravitate to so much bends and slides? They are so similar. Uh, it is just part of, is it just part of my own sound? Definitely, Jeff, everything's part of your own sound. We can't, we can't get away from our own sound. Even if you're playing somebody else's solo, you're going to have your own sound. So, and slides and bends are great for blues. My guitar, uh, John's saying, my guitar teacher is teaching me what she calls E minor blues pentatonic scale. Is that different from the pentatonic scale and the blues scale? Nope, it's exactly what I'm showing you here, John. The E minor blues pentatonic. So actually, E minor blues pentatonic, it's either blues or it's pentatonic. So she's probably teaching you the E minor blues scale because uh, the pentatonic is its own scale and the blues scale is its own scale. The blues scale has the pentatonic in it, but the blues scale adds the flat five in it called the blue note. Uh, that's the difference between the two. But yeah, ap we're, we're really talking about the same stuff, just maybe minus a note or so. Uh, please play a long 12 bar blues at the end. I wanna jam with you this morning, please. Thanks, bud. Uh, Jeff, and I have lots of jam tracks, obviously inside UGS. If you're in UGS, I have nearly 600 jam tracks. And on YouTube, I've got lots of jam, uh, lots of jams now, okay? Do you have a, blue, a blues learning milestone, the 12 bar blues, chordal tones, etc.? Do you have a blues learning milestones, M Mario is saying. Mario, I do, I've got lots of blues. Here's where to find everything blues. I've got a, a whole blues course inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System. This is the one that you can get into for a buck and trial it for those that have are, are serious about guitar. You really want to check it out. Uh, YourGuitarStage.com slash one. There's the link right there. So check that out. You get everything that I've ever done that is those professional videos that you can't find on YouTube, okay? Like nearly a thousand videos, nearly 600 jam tracks, you can get it for $1 right there. So check that out because there's a whole blues course inside there. Otherwise, if you like being distracted by, by YouTube videos, and this suggested that and the other thing, which I am so focused, I feel like, and I can't get away from those, I'm like, I gotta like that and watch it later and uh, go crazy. Then um, if you love that, if you like being distracted, then on YouTube type in your guitar stage blues, okay? Otherwise, 
Last week, we did a two-part series on the 12 Bar Blues. You should check that out. That's a live series, uh, two parts that we have a PDF for, and then two a two-part series today and tomorrow on the lead portion of that, okay? What about first finger bends? I see guitarists do that, but find it hard to do. I don't see a lot of guitar players doing that. I don't see a lot of guitar players doing that at all. So you have to let me know who you're seeing do that. There's not really a lot that you can bend to with the first finger. I mean, you're bending up, if you're talking the pentatonic scale, you're bending up either a whole step or, you know, one and a half steps, which is a lot. So um, I don't see that very often. Uh, you can bend a little bit. Or... Real subtle type bends, but nothing, I, I don't see folks doing that very often. Uh, but otherwise, you just practice it because your fingers aren't used to doing that. They're, they don't have the other supported fingers, and that's why you don't see people bend very often. But apparently, you see a lot of people doing that. So um, follow what they're doing. But there's a reason why people don't do that very often. When you do a pull-off, what technique do you use to keep from hitting the next string down? Rusty, I would love to tell you it's something other than practice, but it's practice. So when you're pulling off, you want to make sure, I mean, I can tell you what I do, but uh, like if I'm pulling off, say my pinky, say I'm on the second string, and I'm pulling this pinky like that, well, I've got my first, string mute, my first finger muting the first and third string. So even if I were to hit that other string, I'm not going to sound it out, okay? If I wasn't muting the other strings, then it might sound like this where you can hear that other string ringing out a little bit, okay? But that's one technique that you can use by muting with that first finger. And it indeed is about practice, okay? Would you please demonstrate the first lead section from Stairway to Heaven? I'm having some trouble getting this down. Um, so, you know, that first lick, <laughs> One of the most classic blues licks of all times, not because it's in Stairway to Heaven, but just this. You know? As Angus Young used it, uh, Jimmy, you know, I mean, it's, it's used everywhere. Um, as Randy Rhodes used it. Uh, uh, anyhow, I'm, I'm getting licks confused here, but everybody uses that lick. Everybody uses that lick. So you bend that first note. And that's all the pentatonic scale except for this one, one last note. I won't go into each note on that one, my friend, because I have a whole lesson and I can't usurp everybody's time by teaching that specific scale or that specific lick when I've already taught that in a video, my friend. So on YouTube, search Your Guitar Sage um, Stairway, and you'll find, and I'll go over that in detail for you, okay? What's the most useful scales for country guitar? Pentatonic, pentatonic and major. How do you usually solo in a scale? I like you can tell what notes are proper to play for improvised solo. Like, can you tell what notes are proper to play for improvised solo? Um, okay, how do you usually solo in a scale? You got to know the key. You got to use the proper scale for the proper key. So if it's a minor key, you should use a minor scale. If it's blues, you should use a blues scale. So match the chord, match the scale to the chords. And then how do you know what notes are proper to play? Well, you do that through trial and error. Again, if someone sat down with you and they said, okay, the six sounds great, the five sounds great, but the one doesn't sound great that often or whatever, like whatever rules they were coming up with, it would still wouldn't mean a hell of beans to you until you were playing them. Because this is an auditory sport, friends. This is not, some people can tell you certain things about music theory and what have you, but until you get your fingers on the guitar and start experimenting, finding out, nope, that note doesn't work over the, that, that chord. Nope, that note doesn't work ah, oh, that note does work, boom, you're going to have an aha moment, you're going to build a neural path, and you're going to remember it next time. But I could tell you, if I could even put it into words, 
it's still not going to help you like it like it would be you improvising. So put on a jam track, get your favorite scale, and sit there for like five hours until it starts sounding good. I'm not joking. Five hours. What's it worth to you? You know, do you want to play a guitar? You want to sound good? It's going to take digging in the dirt. Anybody who is good has taken has done that, where they just sit there and they woodshed until things start sounding good. Only good musicians do that. The ones that don't sound good are the ones that didn't do that. Bottom line, and zero to do with talent, everything to do with practice. Uh, Ben's saying, 49 years of playing, 26 years exclusively in church, save one, one and a half years on bass in a bluegrass band, saw previous practice live stream. Any specific practice thoughts for me, Ben? Ben, I don't know what it is that you're, what you're trying to do, like where you're trying to go, so you'd have to get more specific. Uh, you know, I know a lot of players have been playing for 49 years, uh, or if you're 49 years old, I know players that have been playing for 20, 30 years that have sound like they've been playing for a year. So, and I know players that have been playing for a year that sound like they've been playing for 26 years. So it just depends on where it is in your playing and where it is that you want to go. I guess, tell me what it is that you want to do. Like, what's your desire on guitar? And then I could tell you, uh, your pra- yeah, I could tell you some practice thoughts. Uh, okay, good. That's a great question, though. I get, I get where you, where you're going. Uh, we did a great live broadcast. If, if you watched the one that we did last Saturday, it wasn't this Saturday, last Saturday, I think. Was it this Saturday? I don't remember. No, I don't think so. It was the 25th. Uh, that was before. Nonetheless, we talked about your why and how important it is to answer this why about why it is that you want to play guitar and that that is what answers what it is you should be practicing. Okay, Basically, you'll end up answering the question yourself if you ask the question correctly. Is there a rule of thumb about which fingers to use when connecting the forms when improvising? Should you use your first and second the most? No, there, Mary Beth, there is no rule. It's, it's, all, it's all different. You know, great. Good questions today, friends. All right. When playing blues, are Segovia scales useful or more of a hindrance? Yeah, no, Segovia scales uh, are great for classical, but blues is, just stick to the blues scale. That's what you're going to be using in blues. Do you feel that music scene has changed a lot from the old days? You know, yeah, it's definitely changed. Everything's changing always, right? Uh, the music scene, as far as money and that sort of thing and competition has changed a lot. My wife's a, a songwriter, and I've seen the pool go from about a 1,000 songwriters in Nashville down to about 200 of those that are, like, serious and making money and all the rest. There's lots of songwriters. Uh, those haven't changed. But the ones that are making money and have jobs and stuff like that, that's changed a lot. Uh, digital downloads have changed a ton of things, put a lot of stuff out of, a lot of people out of business. Uh, the creative uh, pool, even though more people are being born and we've got more artists and stuff like that, we definitely have more creativity out there, but not as much if the digital scene hadn't um, wrecked their, what, how much money they're making, you know? So that's made a lot of people go away, a lot of, a lot of great art go away that we'll never see. But there's a lot of great stuff out there, so I don't know if we'll miss it. We'll, we'll find out, I suppose. I have a hard time adding vibrato to my bends. Any tips on that? Well, and I have a video specifically uh, for vibrato, but vibrato is difficult for all people at first. It's not something that comes natural, just like bending or anything on the guitar. It just doesn't come natural at first. Maybe hitting, hitting down, you know, down strokes on your chords, that's about as natural as it becomes. So to practice the vibrato, practice the vibrato. It's going to sound goofy at first. And the only way to get good at it is to, is to observe and say, you know, the first, I know some folks say, well, that's a cop out. He always tells us to practice. If there was another way to do it, where I could say, oh no, here, do this. You don't have to practice. You just got to do this one time and you're done. Don't you think that um, things would be a lot easier on guitar and everybody would be teaching this? It's not the way it works. It really comes down to practice. There are things that we as teachers can show you to get you there quicker, but if you're not willing to put the practice in, it's not gonna, you're not, you're not gonna get there. So when practicing vibrato at first, this is what people sound like. They go, they try to bend and they're like, or you know, to their vibrato to their bend and they're like. 
and it's kind of all over the place. They're, they're doing some vibrato, but it sounds like a mosquito, you know? And so we, we don't want that sound. We want it to be nice and smooth. We want it to be like... And how do we do that? Well, we do it by messing up first and going, hey, whoa, spaz. You're, you gotta calm down there with that bend. You're just practicing doing a nice smooth vibrato. Making it wider maybe, or smaller. Not as wide. Um, faster, as opposed to slower. So you wanna practice all those bits and pieces. Find out what, what you like, you know. B.B. Uh, King would do these. He'd do those types of, of bends and vibratos. He'd do a very fast vibrato. Same with same with Angus Young. That sort of thing. So you get different vibratos, different speeds, and that sort of thing. And the only way to do it is just to practice and practice and practice. You got to get cutting kind of, like you got to get the bugs out, if that makes sense. And the only way to do it is to do it. All right. Great question there. All right. Um, I want to be able to listen to a song. Oh, hold on. Did you? Did you heard Greta Van Fleet? I don't know who that is, Ryad. All right, uh, I want to be able to listen to a song and play the lead lines and the rhythms. Also need to clean up chord changes and placements. I did watch that on 825, great stuff. Okay, uh, Ben, it sounded like there was a question in there, but you know, really it comes down to this. You guys have to start with the basics. A lot of folks, they, they're like, I don't really have the time for the basics, Eric. I'm a very busy person. I've got to go straight to the intermediate or advanced stuff. But the, leave, I'll leave the basics for the kids. I really need to get to the intermediate stuff. <clears throat> that would be like saying that you're going to learn how to do division and multiplication without learning how to add and subtract. One cannot because the one is monumental and foundational to the other. Okay. Not only that, all the pros are really good at the foundational, simple stuff. If you don't get good at that, you'll never get good at advanced stuff. It's an impossibility, just impossible. You've got to know the basics. What are you building a foundation on, right? If you're building a, a castle or a, a house or something, it's like there's always has to be a strong foundation in order for it to last. So I would highly suggest, uh, Ben, going through every video that you can that you can get a hold of for free uh, if you're in a, if you're not in a course. So uh, you can start with the free course I've got, yourguitarstage.com slash 30. There's a reason why I say that those are the top 30 lessons is because they're the most important lessons that you should ever learn. Uh, that's why I put them in the beginning. That's why they're the, I can't express that enough. It's like you're building your foundation. There's the link for you and it's free, yourguitarstage.com slash 30. Uh, they're they're going to teach you all about rhythm, strumming, melodies, the theory that you need to know. It's going to be the easiest 30 lessons you ever watch and the ones that are going to move your playing forward the most more than any other lesson. So that's why they're, they're very, very, very powerful. And I highly suggest it. If you are watching any of my stuff and you haven't gone through those 30 lessons, you're shooting yourself in the foot because you're leaving all that information on the table and you're not looking at it, which is not helping you. So that's where I would start, Ben. But the things that you're saying here are, are, are great, but they're very general. So, you know, how to practice lead lines, how to get good at that and how to be able to hear that. It's all ear training skills and I, and I teach that in, that in the free program. And the rhythm, same thing with the strumming. I teach all that stuff, the chord changes and the placements, all that's in that free program. Uh, that's where I would start, my friend. And then if you want to go in further, take advantage of my $1 offer where you can literally get in and check out everything, you know, for a buck. 
All right, great questions. Ben is saying, I bought your course on Udemy. Does that contain the 30 needed? Yes, Ben, it does. So the free course has that on Udemy, and so does, so do the other courses, obviously, the, the bigger courses, okay? So yes, it has all of that in there. All right. Good, good questions, friends. Uh, play with your jam, jam tracks, but now is more fun playing live. Don't make me, don't make me come to Nashville. Uh, isn't there technically a major blues scale too, where you just use the minor third of the blues note? Uh, yes, there is. And friends, if you haven't already, download the PDF because it's in there. So you, Yusuf's uh, 87, check that out. I teach the major and the minor blues scale, and you are right. Any tips for getting out of a rut? Progress, uh, progress. I feel like is pretty slow currently. Chris, do something different than what you're used to doing. Every time you pick up the guitar, if you go to do blank or blank or blank, stop doing that. Stop yourself right where you're at while you're doing it and say, I'm not doing that. And leave a void, okay? Anybody who's studied meditation knows this. This is a universal principle. If you fill your time up with crap, you won't have time to fill it up with good stuff. If you take all the crap out of your life, there's going to be a void, and then you have some place to put the good stuff. And it's the same with mind space, uh, like what's going on in your mind. Same thing with playing. If you pick, and pick up the guitar and you do the same crap all the time, don't do the same crap. It will leave a void, and it will force you to fill it with something better. And since you're on this journey to do something better, Chris, you chances are will will do that, you know? Why do I hear a squeal as I fret a note? It could be a lot of things. If you're on a farm and there's pigs, it could be that, but it's probably not that. It's probably something different. So like, why do I hear a squeal as I fret a note? Hmm. I don't know. That's, that's strange. You, do you mean this? Like this sound? Uh, otherwise, it could be that your pick is hitting the string. <laughs> that like a lot of folks were trying to do and they're saying that they're needing uh they're wanting to do a uh, pinch harmonic it could be that you're doing that friends we're going to probably go here about seven more minutes we're going to end right at 1 p.m central standard time today so uh Ullman, make sure you go through the free course because you're doing something with your picking hand chances are muting all strings on a strat any tips to preventing knocking the volume yeah get away from the volume Everybody goes through this at first because the strat, that volume is right there. So, you know, st tuck your finger underneath it, you know. My pinky's underneath it here, and I can know, I'll know if I'm messing with it or not, you know. Otherwise, you're going to have to get used to that because it's right there, right where you're muting. It just is, you know. What scales do I gravitate the most to? I'd say the blues scale for sure. It's one of my favorite. All right, good stuff. All right, I'm going all the way back to the top here now. Do you have any advice for being able to play guitar and sing at the same time? Celeste is saying. Celeste, I think you're in UGS because I think I've seen you in there. If not, I apologize. But. I have a whole course within the course about singing and playing at the same time. It's all about breaking things down. I'll go over some of that with you. And I think I may have a video on YouTube about that. If so, type in your guitar sage singing. But Celeste, this is what you want to do. Think about a juggler who's juggling too many balls. If you've ever tried to juggle and you have too many balls up in the air and you can't you can't grab them fast enough, well, that means there's you've got too much going on, okay? And same thing if you're trying to sing and play at the same time. You gotta remember your chords, you gotta remember the progression of those chords, you've gotta remember the strumming, you've gotta remember the lyrics, the melody, what's coming next, a lot of different things. So what you have to do is you gotta take some of that out of the mix, okay? Uh, slow it down, break it down, uh, what I call the inventory breakdown method. What you're doing is you'd learn your chords separately. And with each, piece of inventory that you learn separately, if you don't have those mastered, okay, if you don't have them down pat, 
then will adding more to it help you or hinder you? It's going to hinder you, right? Just like juggling. If you're juggling two balls and you're barely being able to do that, do you think adding a third one will help or hinder? Of course, it's going to hinder you, right? So don't grab a third ball if you can't juggle two. So same thing is true when you're playing. If you don't have the chords down, then putting them in a progression is not going to make it easier. Okay? If you don't know the lyrics to a song, then adding the chord and the strumming with it isn't going to help. You've got to make sure that your lyrics are down pat. Then you've got to make sure that you can sing it, right? And then you want to practice small segments. So maybe you would practice the first half of the verse before you practice the whole song, and you would loop that over and over and over again. So I cover this, Celeste, in many different uh, avenues. Uh, make sure that you check the series out. Uh, if you want to check the series out, you can do that whole buck offer and you can you can see that whole enchilada in there. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure I have a YouTube video on this. Just type in Your Guitar Sage singing and you'll find that. Okay. Um, okay, awesome. Uh, look, Michael's saying here, UGS, really, the first 30 prep prep you for moving on. Just the pick rest video was huge. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, that coupled with suggested metronome. I mean, seriously, it made my precision and attack improve in a week. Michael's talking about something called a pick rest. I learned this from classical guitar. We did something called a, um, a rest stroke. So I came up with something called a pick rest because it's really important. And guitar teachers don't teach it. I don't think I've ever seen it in a book and I've never seen another guitar teacher teach it and it's absolutely crucial especially right in the beginning when you're learning how to use your pick and basically it's this idea of you're picking a string say if it's the fourth string I'm picking and I'm letting the pick rest on the third string some folks will say so what okay then you do it and if you can't do it that means you need it that much more there's more to this, okay? It's in the free course, so check it out. It's in the free course, but you're doing one string and then two strings and then three strings and four strings, and you're practicing this in the specific way that I show you how to do it. And what it does is it gets you to understand how you can control the pick, and with a real simple exercise, will absolutely change your picking style and the way that you play, okay? Uh, <laughs> Edwin, yes. That's immature, but... I know. I thought about it too. Uh, the pig squealer is my new pedal. <laughs> Tube screamer or wah pedal. They're both two totally different pedals. So that's like saying Ferrari or uh, hybrid. They're two do totally different things. But if I were to pick one, I would pick a tube screamer because I like to have a little bit of dirt in my playing like this. <laughs> Which, by the way, that is a Tube Screamer-esque. It has some of the similar vibes to it that um, that uh, a Tube Screamer has. And this is a, a pedal that I'm having developed for me uh, through Kertronics, through my buddy Mark Kerr at Kertronics, okay? All right, we're going to take, like, one more question. A couple years ago, you were working on a book about songwriting. Has it come out yet? Where can I get it? Larry, I'm so glad that you asked. Um, it's coming out. It's been done for literally like two years, but we have a couple little things that we need to, to, to fix that and um, we're working on that, okay? We've, we've got the manpower to do that or the person power to do that, I should say, to do that and, uh, and we are going to get it done. So be looking out for that and seriously, now that I say that, um, we really do um, have the folks to do that. Um, and we're going to be getting that out fairly soon, probably within a couple months here. Maybe sooner. We'll see. But it's on the list. So be hanging out for that, okay? Uh, okay, excellent. All right, friends, it is that mark. It's that time for us to go. I'm so sorry that we had those issues in the beginning. A couple things really quickly. Again, share this video. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, something, okay? Uh, share it because you, you there's only a few people in the room here. You can see it's not a ton of people. Uh, and we're going to give away two lifetime memberships today. What does that mean? That means we're giving $800 of lessons away today, lifetime memberships, so you literally will be in the course for the rest of your life. No need 
to buy lessons anymore, okay? And we continue to pour new lessons into this, nearly a thousand lessons at this point and nearly 600 jam tracks. For those of you that don't win today, you can get in there two different ways. Number one, you can get in there for free or at least the first 30 lessons of it, which if you haven't done those, don't worry about the other thousand. Get the first 30 down and then you can worry about the other thousand. But do the first 30, very important. It's free, yourguitarstage.com slash 30. Bing, 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 bing. You see it right there. For those that have gone through that and you're like, okay, Eric, I appreciate that. That absolutely monumentally changed my playing. I want to get to more. Then yourguitarsage.com slash one for $1 gets you 30 days access to everything in the course the, without limitations, like literally everything. I'm handing you the keys to the kingdom. Have fun. If you get out of there within 30 days and I never see you again, um, that'll be sad, but it, it's, it's okay. I'm not going to be offended. Just at least take advantage of what I'm offering you, okay? Um, okay, so you know what to do. Get out before 30 days if you don't want to be in there. Otherwise, whatever you signed up for is what you'll, you'll, you'll be signed up for. Um, what else? Make sure that you share this because we're going to give those courses away today. And is there anything else? I'm sure I'm forgetting something. If not, guys, thank you so much. Great questions. I apologize for the technical difficulties, but you guys rock for staying in there. And uh, Technology Basics just signed up for the $1 offer. Nice. Um, I'll see you inside then, my friend. Hit me up. I answer questions in there all day long. So that's where I'll be at here in just a minute. Okay, friends, thanks so much. And I'm out of here. I'll, I'll play a little bit of blues um, heading out here. And you guys can, um, can join along with me, okay? Here you go. This is an A minor, A minor blues. And it's kind of a Zeppelin style esque type of vibe. So here we go. <laughs> 